What's up everybody, my name is Moss Norman and in this video we are continuing our series on uh, multi-threading using p-threads. In this video I'm going to introduce you to a bug that's unique to multi-threaded programs. And in general there are two types of bugs in multi-threaded programs. There are non-deadlock and deadlock bugs. And the bug that I'm going to be illustrating and fixing in this video is known as a non-deadlock order violation bug. So coming into this video, there are a couple of prerequisites that I expect you to have in order to kind of follow along and understand what's going on. The first is that you've been introduced to the concept of mutexes already. And secondly, that you've also been introduced to conditional variables. We'll be using mutexes and conditional variables in order to fix this order violation bug. Also, I'm going to make uh, both versions of the program that we write today available on GitHub. I'm going to uh, have a copy of the buggy version as well as a copy of the correct version using mutexes and conditional variables. And uh, that GitHub repo is linked below in the description. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the buggy program. So in my bugged program, I have a main function. And within that main function, I create two threads. And these two child threads each uh, call uh, or execute a particular function. The first uh, thread runs worker thread function, and the second thread runs worker thread function two. So let's take a look at worker thread func and worker thread func two. In worker thread func, what we do is we simply initialize this global variable hello message to the string hello world. So we have this global uh, variable hello message up here, and in worker thread func, all we do is uh, just initialize that variable. In worker thread func two, we actually iterate over the uh, hello message global variable, and we print to the console each character of the hello message uh, string. Now I also have this while loop in both worker thread func and worker thread func two, and this while loop actually kind of just spins on the threads created. Uh, I I'm treating this uh, threads created integer as a boolean, and it's spinning on this thread threads created uh, variable. And what I'm trying to do is uh, set the threads up to the same state before they begin executing their work. So down in the main function, after creating both of the threads, I sleep for one second and then set the threads created uh, variable to one. And that indicates to the worker thread functions that they can continue with their work. But the problem here, and you may have already noticed it, is that we can't control which thread uh, performs their work first. One of these threads is going to be scheduled on the CPU. And even though uh, logically as a developer, I want, I want worker thread func to uh, execute first prior to worker thread func two, that may not happen. And I have no control over whether uh, worker thread func two gets scheduled on the CPU or worker thread func gets uh, scheduled on the CPU next. So what we'll get here is kind of uh, intermittent behavior or very strange behavior when we run the program. Sometimes it'll work, but then other times it'll seg fault because uh, worker thread func two gets scheduled before worker thread func on the CPU. And when uh, worker thread function two runs first, it's gonna seg fault when it tries to access the uh, first character in the hello message uh, character pointer. So now that we have kind of an understanding of what this program does, uh, let's take a look in the terminal. Let's compile it and see, see that behavior. Let's see that uh, the buggy behavior. So to compile, I'm going to say GCC and then uh, the name of the program, orderViolation.c, and then I'm going to link the pthread library. And uh, I should have uh, a file called a.out. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. And the initial run results in a segmentation fault, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and keep running it. And you'll notice the second time I run it immediately, I I actually get hello world printed out to the console, which is the expected behavior. That's the behavior that I want logically to happen, right? And that means that uh, worker thread function ran first, initialized hello message, and then worker thread function two uh, ran directly after that. 
in the first case where the segmentation fault happened, worker thread function two ran first. And because of that, it resulted in a seg fault. So let's run it a couple more times just so you can see how the behavior changes each with uh, each run. Okay, so we get a seg fault again. It works. It works again. Oh, it works again. Wow, it just keeps working. There we go. So uh, <laughs> now we have another seg fault. Uh, it was kind of on a run there. Now it's just seg faulting. So you'll see uh, in multi-threaded programs, uh, bugs like this will happen and they can compound. Uh, just with one, it can be, with one of these bugs, it can be difficult to, to debug the program. But imagine you have two or three, the problem just seems to compound and it can be extremely difficult to, to debug these kinds of issues. So now you've seen the behavior, how do we fix this behavior and enforce the order uh, that these, uh, these worker thread functions execute? Well, to enforce the order of execution, we need to implement uh, mutexes and conditional variables. So the first thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna get rid of these while loops and the threads created uh, global variable because we aren't gonna need those when, uh, when we actually implement mutexes and, uh, and conditional variables. So I'm gonna remove the sleep, the threads created equals one um, and those while loops. So now we've got it, the code cleaned up a little bit and let's add um, let's add some uh, a mutex and a conditional variable. So to add a mutex, I'm gonna use pthread, the type pthread underscore mutex underscore t for uh, mutex type. And we're gonna call the mutex the hello message lock. And we're gonna initialize it using uh, pthread mutex initializer. And the uh, next thing that we're going to create is the pthread uh, conditional variable. So to create the uh, conditional variable, we're going to say pthread condition type message and then created condition. And that is equal to, uh, we're going to initialize it using the pthread uh, condition initializer. Now we also need a variable in addition to the condition uh, variable. We also need a state variable, kind of like the threads created global variable in the prior version of the program. And that variable will indicate that the uh, hello message uh, string has been initialized. So uh, that variable, let's just call it um, me message initialized is equal to zero. Okay, and uh, this, the worker thread uh, function two is going to check the value of this variable uh, when it's waiting on the message created condition. And if this message initialize is set to one, that will indicate to worker thread function two that the hello message variable has been initialized and it can go ahead and print uh, to the console. So now that we have our mutex, we have our condition variable, uh, and we have our state variable, uh, what we're going to do next is in the worker thread function, we're going to uh, utilize the mutex and the conditional variable. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to um, initialize what, what we need to initialize, which is the hello message uh, variable. After doing so, we're going to lock the uh, the mutex hello message lock. So we can use pthread mutex lock, and then within uh, within that we pass in the lock that we want to uh, the the mutex that we want to lock, and that's going to be hello message lock. After we've 
uh, locked. What we're protecting here is not, we're not actually protecting the, uh, we're not directly protecting the hello message variable in this case. We're actually protecting the mutex in this case is actually protecting the condition, the value of the condition uh, variable. So after locking the hello message mutex, what I'm gonna do next is set the message initialize equal to one. And immediately following setting uh, this variable to one, we're going to signal to, uh, we're gonna signal the conditional variable um, message created condition. And to do that, we just call pthread and condition signal and pass in the address of our uh, message created condition. And now that we've signaled, um, what signaling will do is it will wake up this worker thread function too. And, it, and it'll wake that, uh, that, that thread from its sleep so that it can then print to the console. And we'll see in a little bit what that looks like. So after uh, signaling that uh, message created condition, uh, this thread is going to unlock the mutex. Okay, so that's all we need to do in the worker thread function. Uh, we uh, lock the uh, mutex hello message lock. Uh, then we set our state variable to one. We signal our condition and then we uh, unlock our mutex so that the, the worker thread function two can then lock the, the mutex. So in worker thread function two, what we're gonna do is um, <clears throat> we're gonna first attempt to lock the mutex. Okay, once that mutex is locked, what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, check whether or not the state variable message initialize is set to one, is set to zero rather. And if it's set to zero, then what we're gonna do, we know that, that if it's set to zero, the hello message global variable is not initialized yet. So we don't want this, this uh, thread, worker thread function two, to attempt to uh, print uh, hello message out to the console. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're going to sleep, we're gonna force this thread to go to sleep and wait on the condition variable. And to do that, we call pthread uh, condition wait, and we pass in the message created condition and the address to the uh, mutex, hello message lock. Okay. And what pthread condition wait is gonna do is it's gonna put this thread to sleep until it's signaled by worker thread function uh, in this with this call pthread condition signal. When this is invoked, it will wake this thread back up, and this thread will attempt to lock the mutex again. And when it locks the mutex, it's going to check whether or not um, message initialize is equal to uh, zero, which once this has been signaled, we know that message initialize will be equal to one. So uh, it will then drop down to this code and actually print out to the console. Now, before we, um, before we do that, the last thing that we would wanna do here is we wanna unlock the, the mutex. In this case, we can unlock the mutex prior to actually doing the work that we need to do because we know that we're not, we're, at this point, we're the only ones reading or modifying hello message. We've been signaled on this condition variable. We know that once this condition variable is signaled and the message has been initialized, uh, there's no need to have the mutex locked anymore. So uh, we unlock the mutex immediately, 
immediately upon knowing that uh, message initialize is equal to one. And after unlocking it, we then print our message out to the console. So let's go ahead and save this program and uh, see if it compiles and runs as expected. Uh, I expect this program every single time now when it runs, it will print out hello world. We are not going to get any more seg faults uh, if, if this was uh, done correctly. So let's go ahead and recompile it. Oh, and there's a, an error here on line 25. Oh, whoops. There we go. Forgot to, uh, to actually unlock the mutex. So hello message unlock. Uh, there we go. All right. So let's try and recompile it. And it compiled. So let's go ahead and run it. And it ran, but let's continue running because we saw some sometimes where it ran uh, correctly, like three or four times before it seg faulted again. So let's just keep running it and see if we get any seg faults. Okay. It seems pretty consistent at this point. Yeah. Okay. I think it's safe to say that that uh, adding the conditional uh, weight, uh, the conditional variables and the mutexes resolved that uh, that order violation where we were getting that uh, undetermined behavior when running the program. I hope you enjoyed this example, and if you did, please consider throwing a like on the video and subscribing to the channel for more videos. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm going to provide both versions of this program. Uh, in GitHub, they're available in the description below. So I'm going to provide you with uh, the the bugged version with the order violation, and then also this version that we just wrote well, with the conditional variables and mutexes as well. Thanks for watching.